പി എഫ് ഒ ഇസ് ഷോർട്ട് ഫോം ഫോർ പേറ്റൻറ്റ് ഫൊറാമൻ ഒവയിൽ യൂഷ്വലി ഫൊറാമൻ ഒവയിൽ ക്ലോസസ് സൂൺ ആഫ്റ്റർ ബർത്ത് സോ ദാറ്റ് ദർ ഇസ് നോ കമ്മ്യൂണിക്കേഷൻ ബിറ്റ്വീൻ ദ ടു എട്രിയ ഇൻ മോസ്റ്റ് പേഴ്സൺസ് ബട്ട് ഒക്കേഷണലി എ സ്മോൾ ഓപ്പണിംഗ് മേ പേഴ്സിസ്റ്റ് ആൻഡ് ദെൻ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് കോൾഡ് പി എഫ് ഒ പി എഫ് ഒ ഇസ് എ വാൾഡ ഓപ്പണിംഗ് ത്രൂ ദ ഇൻട്രേട്രിയൽ സെപ്റ്റം വൻ ദ പ്രഷർ ഇൻ ദ ലെഫ്റ്റ് എട്രിയം റൈസസ് ആഫ്റ്റർ ബർത്ത് ആസ് ദ ലങ്സ് ബിക്കം ഫംഗ്ഷണൽ ആൻഡ് ഇൻക്രീസസ് പെർമറി വീനസ് റിട്ടേൺ it presses on the left side of the foramen ovale and closes it even if there is a residual opening most of the time there is no shunting of blood across the pfo because left atrial pressure is higher than that in the right atrium but occasionally as in straining the pressure in the right atrium transiently rises above that in the left atrium so that blood can pass transiently from the right atrium to the left atrium across the pfo Another situation is a stretched open PFO when the pressure in the right atrium or left atrium rises significantly due to another disease the atrium enlarges and stretches the interatrial septum along with it when the PFO is stretched open blood can flow either way depending on which side has the higher pressure if it is the left atrium which is enlarged the stretched open PFO will shunt blood in a left to right direction and vice versa if too much of right atrial blood with lower oxygen saturation reaches the left atrium systemic arterial oxygen saturation falls causing cyanosis small pfo cannot produce much problem due to the shunting of blood across it unless it is stretched open by other diseases but small clots from lower limb veins or veins of the abdomen can occasionally pass across it to the left atrium this is a risky situation the clot can move from the left atrium to the left ventricle and then to the aorta from the aorta the clot can move to any part of the blood circulation this is known as paradoxical systemic embolism originating from the venous side if the embolus gets lodged in a cerebral artery and blocks it a stroke may occur most important problem with paradoxical systemic embolism is stroke though it can also get lodged in any other artery of the body and cause damage to that region some advocate closure of the pfo with a device especially after a stroke to prevent recurrence this is considered only if the right left shunting across the pfo is demonstrated pfo can be documented by an echocardiogram it will also show right left shunting during certain types of strain indicating the risk of paradoxical systemic embolism the color doppler echocardiogram shown here shows a left to right shunt across the pfo most likely due to higher pressure in the left atrium as discussed earlier another test is transcranial doppler an ultrasound study of the head which looks for tiny air bubbles in the cerebral arteries for detecting a right to left shunt across the pfo agitated saline containing tiny air bubbles is injected into a right forearm vein if the air bubbles are detected by transcranial doppler machine it is presumed that tiny blood clots can also pass across the pfo to produce a stroke right to left flow of tiny air bubbles in the agitated saline will also be seen in the left atrium on echocardiogram this technique is known as saline contrast echocardiography air bubbles appear as white dots while the blood filled regions are black on echocardiogram patent for amen ovale can cause paradoxical embolism and stroke hence in every case of stroke it is necessary to look for a pfo pfo typically shunts right to left at the end of a valsalva maneuver hence injection of an agitated saline bolus at the end of a valsalva maneuver and detection of the micro bubbles in the left atrium within three cardiac cycles from the right atrial appearance would suggest presence of a pfo this is called the three beat rule to discriminate patent foramen ovale mediated right to left shunt from intrapulmonary right to left shunt using contrast transthoracic echocardiography delayed appearance would indicate a pulmonary av fistula sometimes injection from the lower limb is needed to detect a pfo because of the preferential streaming of the inferior vena cava blood towards the pfo as in fetal life This is more likely if there is an associated eustachian wall. Transesophageal echocardiography may be able to detect PFO better than transthoracic echocardiography. 
Paradoxical embolism can cause stroke in the presence of an interatrial communication. Emboli originating in the systemic veins usually travel to the pulmonary circulation causing pulmonary embolism. But in the presence of an interatrial communication, emboli originating from the systemic veins, usually from the deep veins of the lower limbs and pelvic veins, can traverse the interatrial septum and reach the left side of the heart. From the left side of the heart, the emboli are carried by the arterial circulation and can get lodged in the cerebral arteries, causing ischemic stroke. Atrial septal defect is an unrestricted communication between the two atria so that in the postnatal life, blood flows from the left atrium to right atrium because of the higher compliance of the right ventricle compared to the left ventricle. Patent foramen ovale, on the other hand, is a valvular opening with hardly any flow in the postnatal life. The valvular nature of the opening prevents flow due to the higher left atrial pressure which keeps the opening closed. But in certain phases of Valsalva-like strain, the valvular patent foramen ovale opens up, allowing shunting from the right atrium to the left atrium. This phasic shunt can allow a critically timed embolus to travel from the systemic venous side to the systemic arterial side, potentially leading to ischemic stroke. Hence, theoretically, stroke due to paradoxical embolism is more likely to occur with a patent foramen ovale than an atrial septal defect.